All right, what's up? It's Mitchell Black coming at you live on our Tuesday show. We might be up in this thing to Tuesday and Thursday, but every Tuesday we're coming at you around lunchtime and giving you this live show just to help you get all the right information. All right, look, we talk about this all the time that when you are trying to reach your goal, when you're held back, whether it's fitness, nutrition, whether it's whatever, is it that you're uneducated? Because it's probably not. It's probably not that you're uneducated, right? Think about how much you try to learn. Think about how smart you are. As a human race, all we're trying to do is get better and better and better. But you might have the wrong information. I want you to really think about that. The training industry, the fitness industry, none of this stuff is regulated. So we have a massive amount of people that are trying to get information. Think about how much you go to YouTube, how many blogs you read, everything that you sought out to get information. There's no, there's no decrease in the amount of people that want information. We have a very broken system though on how you receive that information and how the information is then dispersed out. Who owns the information? I'm not here to steal you wrong. I'm here to give you everything you need to be successful. That's what my book is about. That's what all this information is about, is giving you everything so as a human race, as human beings, we can take care of ourselves. And you want to know something that you do all the time to really try to take care of yourself? You work out. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to recover from all of your workouts. All right? I want, here's what I want you to think about. I don't, care, I don't care what exercise program you do. I don't care if you're doing CrossFit, boot camps, running, uh, you're doing being a bodybuilder, a power lifter. What are you really trying to do when you take supplements, when you, uh, when you cool down? We're going to be talking a lot about supplements today. You're trying to recover. That's really what you're trying to do. Let's think about it. Why do people take steroids? Think about why somebody would shoot themselves in the butt with a steroid injection. What's the benefit of that? It's not to get big and strong. You don't take steroids and get big and strong because of the steroids. Lance Armstrong didn't take steroids and then become a better cyclist on steroids. Everybody's taking steroids, dude. It's not that the steroids make you better. It's that the steroid gives you the ability to recover. That steroid, what it does to your body is you can beat the bananas out of it. You can crush it and the next day you're at 100%. So every single day you would come into the gym, you would come into your session, you would come into whatever you're going to do, probably even more to 100% than the day before. The steroids increase your ability to recover. No fatigue, no muscle breakdown, no soreness. Now I'm not telling you to take steroids, man. I'm not, I'm not telling you to go out and find a steroid salesman. What I'm saying is what's the benefit of supplements? What's the benefit of recovering? Is to get some fraction of recovery to what that would simulate, right? I'm giving you an extreme example to help you understand it. The way you want to view your supplements and what you should take and everything we're going to talk about today is so you can recover. Why do you need to recover? Let's go ahead and even write that down, recovery. The reason you need to recover is so the amount of work you can do goes up. Work gets you your result. Like, like if you're a runner and, you're, and your goal is to run faster, what is that built off of? It's built off of work and the amount of sessions you can do and how fast you can run. If you have crappy recovery, you run Monday, you feel miserable Tuesday, you feel miserable Wednesday, you feel miserable Thursday, you're sore, whatever, you can't run again until Thursday, you miss three sessions. The amount of work you were able to do was to go down. What if you could do something, you could lift, you could run, you could do whatever, and your recovery was fast. Then you could work more. Work equals result. The more work that you can get done, the faster you can get to your result. Now when you can't get work done faster, your result takes longer. I'll give you the same example of running. If it takes me 20 minutes to run a mile, I'm probably not very fit. I probably need to lose some weight. If I can get down to running a mile in six minutes, I'm able to get more work done faster. Same mile, I just got more work done faster. Probably have lesser body composition, body fat than the person it took to run 20, uh, 20 minute mile. I'm probably stronger. I'm probably leaner. Like there's all these other factors, right? Because I'm able to get more work done. So great, how do we do that? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over four things with you. Oh, four fingers. I'm gonna go over four, fing uh, four fingers, what? I'm gonna go over four things with you that, uh, that will get you a little bit more success in your recovery. I'm gonna answer some questions that we typically get. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is protein. So, we get this question all the time. People are like, 
I want to take protein. I want to get my gains. Great, you should. Okay, let's talk about that. So I have some Ascent protein. We carry Ascent and Progenix here at StrongSide. And um, I'm going to put some links below in this YouTube video to everything that I'm going to talk about. Because, look, I'm just here to give you the right information. So I don't want you watching this video and then you go to GNC and they get you all this crap supplements. I'm just going to put all the links to everything you need below. That's why I do it, guys. Because if I'm going to spend my time talking about it, I want to make sure you have the right information. Okay? So we carry Ascent and Progenix here and you can get it in the links below. Um, really what you're looking for is a good quality supplement and you can go watch my other video about quality supplements. I'll put that in the link below as well so I'm not going to uh, go over all that today but why would you want to take in protein? Okay, so there's this thing called protein synthesis and we're not even going to break it down, dude. It's, it, this is not an anatomy and physiology lesson, okay? But there's this thing called protein synthesis and it's basically your body's ability to regenerate the muscles and for them to grow and rebuild strong or whatever. You need protein to do that. And all, here's all you need to think about. You want to think optimize in 45. Oh. This means optimize in 45. You want to try to take in a protein shake within 45 minutes after the workout. Why would you want to do that? Because of bioavailability. B-I-O. So that, that's basically my body's ability to absorb the nutrients. If I get done working out, my cells are really, really open and they stay really, really open for about 45 minutes after the workout. So if after the workout, I get done, I grab my protein shake, I mix some water, I shake it up and I drink it, within a 45 minute window, that's called an anabolic window, my body will take in that protein, absorb it, because it needs it, because I just kicked the bananas out of it, and it will start metabolizing it. Healing my muscles at a faster rate, what am I looking at for recovery? So tomorrow, my muscles aren't as sore. Tomorrow, my muscles aren't as beat down. I can come into the gym tomorrow, I can get more work work done, more work equals my result. If I neglect that, if I don't take in the protein within 45 minutes after the workout, the chances of me feeling sore, the chances of my muscles not being as strong the next day, that goes up and you don't want that. So protein shake right after a workout, just protein and water, you know, whatever. That's why we have a fridge here. We let people keep whatever they want in there. And uh, you shake it up, drink it, slam it, done within 45 minutes after the workout. Another thing that we get is creatine. So we have some Progenix creatine here. There are, we just don't carry other brands besides Progenix for their creatine. There are some other brands that I'll put below as well that you can get that are, that are really effective. Now here's what I'm going to talk to you about with creatine. Creatine isn't necessarily going to recover you. It's not, um, it's not 100% like I'm not going to be sore. What it does is it increases your power output. So if you could lift 100 pounds on Monday, more than likely you're going to be able to lift 95 or that same 100 pounds on Tuesday. You're going to be able to put out the force. It lets more water and glycogen or carbohydrates get stored inside your muscles. That's really what it does. And it makes you more powerful long term. Ladies, it's not going to make you jacked, all right? Look, it, your body makes creatine. So I'm not saying that you should take things that your body doesn't make or whatever. You want more of it to get more power done in your body. So if you're looking to be more explosive, get more pull-ups, run faster, lift heavier, you know, whatever, you want more umph out of it, you want to be able to push more, that's where that creatine comes from, all right? You're going to want about three to five grams post-workout. I know there's all these studies saying other stuff. You just pay that in mind, right? Look, three to five grams post-workout. You can put it in your protein shake, slam it, done. If anybody knows anything about creatine, one thing that's really studied with creatine is cycling. I'm going to do a couple days on, a couple days off. You know, it's cycling your creatine levels. Uh, you don't need to do that. It doesn't really matter. There has been very limited to no research showing the need to cycle your creatine on and off than just keeping it in your body consistently. If you're going to take creatine, you also need to take a legit creatine supplement, not something that has creatine in it. All right, I'll give you an example. Like we, ca we carry Fit Aid here, right? That's a recovery drink. And I, I love Fit Aid. I'm not even picking on Fit Aid. But they have a Fit Aid supplement that is uh, Fit Aid RX or whatever. And they're like, it has creatine in it. It's tr true, it does, but it's not enough to get anything done. Like when you drink something or whatever, and it has 30 different things in it, there's not enough of that one thing to actually do anything. So three to five grams, all right? Um, Post-workout, 
once a day. If you're really trying to get powerful, we can talk more. You can just email me or whatever. We can talk more about increasing your dosage, but a normal amount to be powerful, be explosive, squat more, get what you want out of that three to five grams, which is a scoop of creatine after the workout. Boom, done. The next thing we get questions on is BCAAs. So branch chain amino acids. So BCAAs are the building blocks of protein. All right, so a protein is made out of nine amino acids. And in your body, you have all these different amino acids. So again, you don't have to know too much about it. And you have essential and you have non-essential amino acids. Non-essential amino acids are amino acids that your body already makes. And essential amino acids are amino acids that your body cannot make. So you have to get it from food and stuff like that. And that's typically what's in the branch chain amino acids. This is the building block, what actually stacks that stuff together to build more protein and protein synthesis, like regrouping in your body. So the more this builds together, the stronger you're going to be. And you're going to want the same amount, about three to five grams after a workout. Um, and you can take that, everybody can take that. This, this isn't like creatine where some people want to take it and some people don't, whatever. Um, and this would be a good stack or whatever of supplements, typically we'll call it stack of supplements. But this would be 100% centered around recovery. So this is not a pre-workout. This is not an energy booster. That's not what we're doing. What we're saying is, look, I'm trying to get strong. I'm trying to continuously lift the same amount of load every single day or you know be pretty close to it. I'm trying to train consistently without feeling so fatigued and I'm trying to train without feeling tired and exhausted and whatever. You might just be really freaking tired because your body doesn't have the stuff to rebuild. It doesn't mean that exercise is too bad, but hey, it turns out if you drive your car all the time and you never put gas in it, you're not going anywhere. That's what this is, all right? So that's what these will do. You can take them every single day. You don't have to take all of them. You can definitely take the protein, the BCAAs, and you'd be fine. You want to add a little bit more strength volume, you take the creatine. Here, though, this is something that everybody can do, all right? You want to talk about the right information? This, what I'm about to talk about, is what nobody wants wants to talk to you about. Everybody wants to talk to you about this. This is cool, but let me tell you what really, really matters. Cooling down. Cooling the crap down, dude. Freaking arrows and a smiley face. Everybody that I know that is super stupid sore wants to work out until their legs fall off, drink a protein shake, and wonder why they're sore the next day. You drink 30 protein shakes, take 20 scoops of creatine, and down the whole bottle of BCAAs, you will still feel miserable, and you probably deserve every bit of it too. If you do 200 wall balls and walk out of the gym, you will be stupid sore, stupid sore. And there's no amount of protein that can, that can fix that. You need to cool down. So what does that mean? Typically, you're gonna be really, really sore from just blood sitting inside the muscles. That's all that's, all that's gonna happen, all right? Can you hand me a red marker or a pink marker or anything colored? Boom, okay, so this is what it looks like. You have a muscle belly, right? Inside that muscle belly, blood circulates. You put blood in there when you work out. That's why you do a bunch of bicep curls. Your biceps jacked when you do all those bicep curls. The blood will then sit in there after the workout. Not only does the blood sit in there, but it can't transport oxygen. And this blood is what develops all the lactic acid that turns to pyruvate acid, that turns to all the jumble junk. And that soreness, this blood without oxygen called deoxygenated blood, sits in that muscle belly. You have to squeeze it. It's like a balloon. You've got to squeeze that thing over and over again to circulate the blood to make it move. After a workout, you need to do some type of cardiovascular activity to circulate the blood. That's why all of our cool downs here start with some type of monostructural activity to circulate the blood. If you're going to put a bunch of weight over your head, you're going to do a bunch of push-ups. I don't care if you're doing group fitness, dude, and you're going to beat the crap out of your muscles and then walk out of the gym, 100%, you will feel miserable the next day and your recovery will go down. I'm not even asking you to cool down for an hour. I'm asking you to do three to five minutes. 
Three to five minutes. The, the, if you're going to sit around and talk to your friends when the workout's over, I would encourage it, but you have three to five minutes. Don't say you don't have three to five minutes. You have three to five minutes, all right? So what you want to look at is, am I taking some time to cool down? When you cool down, cool down something that looks like what you just did. If you just did a bunch of deadlifts, power cleans, snatches, box jumps, back of my body, cool down with some rowing. If you just did a bunch of squatting, wall balls, you know what I mean? cool down with some biking and you're and you can't just be sitting there you can't just be sitting there on the bike you need to actually stimulate some blood flow three to five minutes kind of getting winded kind of pushing getting you out of breath circulating the blood allowing the blood the old blood to get out the new blood that carries nutrients to get in and circulate the blood over and over again then you could go into your stretching, your foam rolling, your whatever. Then you would go take your supplements. The reason you would take this after this is to get the blood out of the way. These are really important to then heal the parts of the muscle that you broke down, all the little tears that you got inside the muscle, so it can then rebuild larger. So the muscle can rebuild larger and stronger, and it can look the way that you want it to look and perform the way you want it to perform. But I promise you, if you're watching this video with the intent of getting less sore, none of this will help you. You'll be a strong mamma jamma, but you will be a sore mamma jamma by just taking all this stuff. You need to cool down. This is free. This is totally free. You gotta buy this stuff. You don't have to buy any of this. You gotta cool down, you gotta circulate the blood, and you gotta feel amazing. All right, so look, we're here to give you the right information. We are here to just cut through all the jumble junk, cut through all the crap, tell you what actually really matters. I know you want information. There is hundreds of thousands of people watching these videos and getting on blogs and stuff. Great, but our distribution system of giving, giving you information is broken. And I wanna work with you, I wanna help you. Mitchell, strong side, all of this, we're here to help you out, all right? So look, check it out, check out the links below, cool down and uh, keep rocking.